It's awesome. And so I kind of want to take this time and I want to do something that I haven't done with uh, anyone before. I want you to commentate on the Romans Road. And the Romans Road basically is, um, is, is, is what people got from the, the Book of Romans that uh, are steps for salvation or at least understanding the steps of salvation. And the Romans, uh, they paved a lot of roads because they were the, like the main transport place of the time. A lot of people traveled to Rome to get to Jerusalem and things like that. It was basically the capital of, of uh, the historical time. And so, you know, okay. they kind of they pens this out from that idea and from the, the concept that all these scriptures are built out of Romans. So I'm going to read a couple of these and I want you just to kind of uh, give some feedback on it. So Romans 3, 23, it says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. What's your thoughts on that? My thoughts on that? None of us are holy, man. I mean, my thoughts on that, none of us are perfect. Um, and no matter how perfect you seem to try to be, you're still going to fall short. Mm. I mean, that's just that's point blank, period, man. That, that's from my point of view. Um, it, even sitting in the chair, man, you know, and seeing a pastor up there, some pastors up there preach, um, you know, and you know, you knowing them, you know, and them saying some things up there, and you're like, man, hold on, you know, you're saying you're saying you're this, but I really know who you are, you know. So that it, it just shows that even the pastor up there is not not, you know what I mean? They're not above, they're not above anyone. So that word all, all really all, applies that's to, to everybody. To everybody. Yeah, it's it's okay. not just it's not. It's not just, you know, the the people sitting in the church, the people on the streets. It's it's pretty much anyone, er, everyone, man. But what world. if I feel clean? You could feel clean. But does it mean that you're clean? Yeah, no, you're still, yeah. you're, still, you're still a sinner, you know? <laughs> yeah, apart uh, from God, it's just, yeah. you know, that's just what it is. And so, and it's hard to get people to admit that. Because yeah. people don't want to admit that they have flaws or they don't want to admit that they're dirty in any kind of way. Yeah, that's you know true. What I, mean? I know what you mean. That, that's true. Yeah. But so that's kind of hard to to grasp. And it's funny because when you think about the Romans Road, a lot of people are like, "Oh, that's cliche. That's basic Christianity." But it's so much deeper. It is so much deeper. Just like we were unpacking it right now. Yeah, if you get into it, man, they, that's you know, how deep it is. It's yeah, deep. Like, people get offended. They'll get offended by that. Yeah, you know, they'll, yeah, they'll really like, get offended you by it. Call me a sinner. That's yeah. like, man, you calling me? You know, you cussing <laughs> at me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so Romans 6, 23, we're doing the build-up because I, I believe in the process. I believe God uses the process to, to build us up just like he's done with your life. You know, he, he was processing you a certain way, and, you know, he was throwing things at you, and some of it you were completely disobedient to it. And at, at this point of your life, you're like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm in, God. Let me in. I'm, I'm ready to do this. So Romans uh, 6, 23 for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Talk to me about that. For the wages of sin, sin is, death. is death. How do we know that that's true? Man, from my experience, uh, it, it is very true. Um, man, when I was saved, I, I could just speak on this, the wages of sin. When I was running the streets before I was saved, um, I man, I pop up to houses, bro, that weren't even... Um, you know, from my hood or nothing, different rivals. I walk in there on touch, thinking like, hey, they, it's because they knew who I was. But you know, after I got saved, God showed me. You know, He had a purpose for me, bro. But He showed me He was like, they didn't touch you. It was because of me. It wasn't because of you. You know. Yeah. So if you know, if by His grace, if it wasn't for His grace, bro, I wouldn't be here today. Yeah. You know. But the the sinning that I was doing, I I could I could have died. You know, I would have been dead. I um, mean, He showed me that. You know, <laughs> and. That's why I believe that right there for the wages of sin are death, but yeah. the gifts of God are, is eternal. Yeah. Because you know that um, your consequences were just decaying you quicker. Oh, you were dying time. a lot faster inside, emotionally, and all these things. And death was just at your door. But when, when God came into your life, you felt alive. Yeah, death, death was at my door, man. I, yeah. I, I tell you that. Uh, yeah. And the process, uh, as a, uh, they give my testimony, I didn't get, I didn't get to that, but... Um, Probably that I smelt death, so that's how I mean. I, I know I was sinning, 
Like, bro, the sin, I, I, I knew I lived in sin. I just didn't care. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I, I smelt that, you know? I, like, I wasn't afraid of it. Like, I, I smelt it. And, you know, we like, whatever. You know, you're going through them things, bro. You just don't care about nothing. I smelt, I smelt that pass by me. You know what I mean? What, how I was living before God came and saved me. I mean, and, and sometimes God, God allows things like that to happen, bro. But when you, when you gave yourself to him, <laughs> like that, that gift he gives you, bro, like he, it says it right there. It's eternal. And I'm living proof, you know, because man, death could have took me right there. When I told him that, you know, if you too, you know, he could, he could have took me, bro. Yeah. But God, but God's gifts eternal, bro. Like he just, I can't explain it, man, unless it happened, brother. But it, it's that, that right there is so real, man, because like I'm telling you, I, I smelt it. I smelt that. Like literally he walked right past me. Yeah. And uh, I'm still like, here. Like a funeral, like you've been in a no. funeral home or something, you just found No, like, like uh you man, that presence was strong though. In my in my house. It wasn't in the funeral home, it was in my house. So you when know? you say you smelt like you really felt I it. I felt I felt that yeah. presence. It it was there. Yeah. You know? And it was just like I've been around evil people. I, I really have. I've been around evil people and I could tell you that the place just gets really eerie. It gets really thick. It gets really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when you say that, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Is that the atmosphere is just really it's a, thick it's a and different, angry. Yeah. Yeah, I get you. So the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life um, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And you coming to God... I know that you feel more alive because you man, you, much more alive. Are you smile? You, you perk up. You perk up when you're talking about God. Yeah, so, man, it's, so, a, it's a blessing, bro. Yeah. So people can argue with they can what say you what think they want. The, I don't care the, what the, they say, but <laughs> they can't argue with the changed life. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I like that. So uh, let's go. Let's continue on this Romans road. Uh, Romans five eight. But God demonstrates His own love uh, for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Man, how did that hit home for you? Like, Man, I mean, when you when you he really demonstrate his love, bro. Like, it's just like I said, he didn't have to save me. He didn't have to come down and put his arms around that, bro. I was, I'm a nobody. You know, that's I'm nobody. I'm, I'm far from perfect. You know, far from holy. All of that. But him demonstrating his love. I mean, that that love is unfailing, bro. You know, from him coming down. You know. No one, none of like you said, none of us are perfect. Or oh, I even said none of us are perfect, bro. None of us are holy. But for him to come down, while I'm still sinning, while I was still sinning, while I had all that hatred and you know anger in me, and for him to put his arms around me and demonstrating just to show, just to give me a piece of his love, show me his presence, like man, that's man, I I, I can't really explain it, bro, until it happens. You yeah. know, it's uh, it's it's amazing. It's yeah. you know, it just shows that his love's unfailing. You know, he don't care what you do in this world. Yeah. You you could be a murderer, man. He's still gonna love you because you're his child, and it's it's a man. It's it's yeah. the words can't explain it, brother. You know, it's just just joyful. It's it's going back to that like your conversion part. You know, the peace that surpasses all understanding. Yeah, man. So you're trying to explain something that <laughs> they, people don't understand. Yeah, they, you can't explain they it, man. Been to that yeah. crossing point. Yeah, no, it's I, just, I, I, it's I get just, it. man. <laughs> so, but God demonstrates His own love. You know, back in the neighborhood. Um, we used to like if people looked out for you like when you were young or whatever we would call that love be like oh man that person's showing love right there and in our in our human thinking we're like man that's complete love and then when you get to the Bible you're just like no this is real love yeah you know a the difference there's yeah, a difference bro a person putting down their life for you is complete love a person lending you $20 is an imperfect example of love I mean, maybe it's a form of love. Maybe it's a form of your understanding of love. But man, when you read what Jesus did, you're just like, that's complete, perfect love. Mm. Ain't nothing going to touch that. My homeboy down the street's not going to touch that. You know what they I mean? They can't take that from you, yeah, bro. There's only one person that, that had the guts, the audacity, and the love to do that, and that was him. And so I think that's another overlooked scripture. I think that's another thing that that uh we get wrong sometimes is just like we don't understand this love until we get to there yeah <laughs> until we we feel the father really reaching down on us like he did in your life all right so romans um 10 9 uh not romans 10 9 through 10 it says this if you declare with your mouth jesus is lord and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead you will be saved for it is with your heart that you believe and I just want to recap with that. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, 
and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. What are your thoughts? Talk to me a little man, bit. Man, on that, man, it, it it's a lot, bro. Because you could you could you could declare it with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, He's King. You know, He He raised from death. I could say that all I want. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but do, yeah. do I really mean it, you know, or do, do I really know the understanding about it right. unless I read the Bible, right. you know, and or, you know, God, God's actually touched me. You can say that I want your heart. It, I mean, you like truthfully got to be mean it, man. And it, you, you got to have it in your heart. You know, you actually got to live for God. I, that's what I for my belief reading that. I mean, you got to you got to live for God daily. You know what I mean? You got to you got to kill yourself every day to live for him. Because yeah. um, professing that you can say it, you can say it. But it don't mean nothing, yeah. you know, unless it, unless it's, it's penetrated in your heart, bro. And you're living it, yeah. you're living it. You know what I mean? Because if you're not living it, you you're just saying words, you know. Yeah. You're telling yourself a lie, you know. You're telling people a lie if you're not living it. Yeah, and I like how he just God is just a great author. He just he just says it right then and there. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And we always know that it's the heart that God has to get first. Mm -hmm. before it comes to the mouth and um when i was hearing your story your conversion story i didn't hear the i confess you as lord and savior but what i heard was i believe in you god and sometimes people think that you have to do a sinner's prayer in a certain fashion in order to be saved but you already believe god in your heart and you're just coming in agreement with him like Hey, I know you're out there. I, I know like you're the answer to this problem. I know you're the answer to the situation. And I, I might not have my words right, but he understands. But I, <laughs> I know that I'm reaching out to you because I believe in you. And I think the heart is already confessing that you believe in God. And then you're just trying to figure out how to say it in the perfect tense or whatever, <laughs> yeah. you know, you know, but I, I think that that's overlooked is that. You know, because um, I've heard people say a lot of things about, you know, I said the sinner's prayer and I did this. Uh, but I'm like, man, did you feel that? Did you feel the presence of the Father? Did you feel the conversion? Did you Was God really in that when you were, when when you were, you're, praying. When you were praying that, you know? Yeah. Because most people that get converted, um, a lot of times it just happens in the random in the random places. Mine was a jail cell, like I said. That was my story. You know, I got converted completely in a jail cell when I really reached out to God in prayer. And I didn't know a special formula. I didn't know, like, you got to do it X, Y, and Z. I just knew that in my heart I believed. And, and then that, I just started confessing, like, hey, that, you're real. Exactly, bro. But like, like you said it, man, the heart, that's where it's at. And I'm telling you that because <laughs> another experience, brother, like, when, the, when all that happened, all that stuff going on, you know, and I started praying. You know, like you said, the words weren't exact, but you know, in my in my terms, you know that, that hey, I do believe you, you know. But he he knew my heart. Like I started feeling like uh, sharp, real sharp pain in my heart, but like I was getting like, being stabbed, you know. Confession but like, kind of yeah, thing. but like the yeah. dark, like you know, he was chipping off the darkness. You know yeah, what I mean? That way. And uh, you know that that's that's how you know it's real, bro. If 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 he got your heart, man, that's that's it. Yeah. You got to be sincere. And, uh, well, we sing worship songs all the time. Break every chain. You know, yeah, but we I sing mean, all these things. And we, we're trying to describe to blind people what God is actually doing in the spiritual. And that's uh, what he's doing. He's breaking chains in the spiritual. But a lot of a lot of a lot of people from the streets like us, they don't they don't realize that unless it happens to them. To right. them, seeing is believing. You know, they got to go through it to believe it. Yeah. You know, they, they're, they're not walking by that faith, bro. Yeah. You know, and uh, I, I had some faithful moments. I had, to, I had, uh, you know, he, he called me on it, and I, I, I had to move on it. You know, yeah. but um, we we gotta go by faith, man. You know, yeah. to to do that, and it's uh, we we just faith. we just don't we choose not to. You know, we we got that human instinct, like uh, you know, if we know if this don't go right, as you know, what's what are we gonna fall back on? Let, let me ask you this: How important is faith? in the uh in the gang world or in uh prison politics or things <laughs> like that how you gotta have faith in your people right yeah i mean you you have to bro but it, it the game done changes up so much i mean it's like there's there's no more code man there's no more code in in, in that gang yeah. life you know what i mean they, i mean they'll, they'll betray you so quick it's not even funny yeah you know but like okay going back to the old school tradition of how um stuff used to be ran um i'm thinking about like, I mean, you really had to have faith in your people to 
to do certain things. And I saw that throughout, you know, my, my sentence and all that stuff. Yeah, growing up, yeah. yeah. But um, I realized that if we can understand it on a human level, if we can understand it like this, we should be far well when we get saved to understand it like this. Like if it works here on earth for us like this, the whole faith thing that we have to have faith in each other, you know what, how much more is it going to be important to God that we have faith like this, that we have faith with him? Like, so I think God really well, values faith so much because he says the righteous shall live by faith because with, with our trusting in God, you know, it's, it's like, it's, it's walking in a circle, you know, <clears throat> And we're not accomplishing nothing. So he says the righteous shall live by faith. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's pleasing to God. So <laughs> it happens here. I have to have faith in my wife. I have to have faith in myself. I have to have faith in certain things. Um, not to a point where, like, you know, I'm, I'm over-religious about, you know, those things, those objects and stuff. But I know that I need to be super, super like I need to know like hey this faith right here has to be my main faith this mm -hmm. has to be my main relationship right here I gotta have faith in God that he's gonna pull through and every time he does my faith gets stronger amen to that yeah so yeah. I mean it's a build up <laughs> yeah it's a build up most definitely alright so um, Romans 10 13 and I think this is the last one for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved now, what do you think? What, what do you think about this? And and talk to me a little bit about this. Man, everyone can call upon God. They'll be saved. I I believe I do believe He will save them. But it's up to them if they really want to be saved, because He can save you. You know, He He can save you. But what are you gonna do after He saves you? Mm -hmm. You know, are you gonna go back to doing what you were doing? Or are you gonna live? Are you gonna drop what you're doing and live for Him? Yeah. You know, and it's it. It's like all who are called, or I don't know that I don't know the name of it, or the name of that verse, but all who are all or many are called, but few 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 will answer. You know, few are chosen. Yeah, yeah few yeah, are yeah. chosen. You know, um, I I seen that actually in my time. You know, and right now they're having a hard time. They're having a hard time going through some things because they chose they chose to follow God, but you know, they, then they backslid, and now they're going through some things, and now they got to figure out how they're gonna get out of that. But it's just like with this, you know. Everyone who was called in the name of or calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I do believe that He will save them, but it's up to them if they really want to be saved. Because yeah. you, God can call you; He'll save you, or He can come. But if you don't want to do things His way, you know, because He'll give you an option. God, you know, He's not gonna He's not gonna force it on you. You gotta live for me. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, for me, He He'll give you an option, man. That's that's how I see it. You're gonna live for Him or not? You know, He's not gonna force it upon you. He, mm -hmm. he gives you free will. But are you, or do you want to live righteously? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you want to bear good fruit, man. It's just... How, how optimistic do you think we should be about this verse in the sense that um, that is, is the Bible... Can the Bible be talking about two things? Uh, being saved uh, spiritually, we know that God does that. And can he also save physically? We know that God's done he, that, He too. can do both. He can do he both. Do, he can do both. Yeah. Oh, I, I seen it. So <laughs> if he chooses not to do the other, like save somebody physically. Don't mean you're not you're not spiritually saved, brother. Right. Yeah. It so I think that. that's important because I think yeah. that's overlooked sometimes. Yeah. No, it, I mean, if you don't heal your body, if your body don't get healed, that's just because that's not in his will. But because your spirit, your spirit, I mean. We still have to yeah. go through the consequences of this decaying body. Yeah. That was part of the curse, right? That's still the part. Our spirit, bro, our spirits, our spirits are what's, what lives on, you know, our soul. Yeah. You know, and that's what a lot of the, a lot of, a lot of us don't understand, man. Because it, it, it took me a minute to understand that, too. You know, like, you know, why is my body going through all this? Like, man, my body hurts. Or, you know, I had, I was sick. And I'm like, Lord, why is all this? Yeah. You know, but it's just, it's. It's just our body. It's temporary. That's what he. That's what he told me. It's just temporary. He's he's communicating. Yeah, you know, with us. Like, yeah. Hey, this is this it's is. It's just temporary, man. You know, yeah. our, we got better bodies when, when we're gone, man. Yeah. And I'm telling you, <laughs> if you can see that, man. It, you know, if anyone's watching or you know you guys want to listen, ask God to give you provision. Ask God just to to give you a little glimpse to show you, man. And, and I'm telling you, He will. He'll He'll do that. You know, because yeah. He He's done that for me, man. And it's just like. You know, it blows your mind like, man, you know, this is what I'm looking forward to, you know? And he'll give you a little glimpse, not all of it, because you can't handle all what he gives you, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna, I want to throw a nugget out there. This is awesome. Um, so, you know, God had leaders in the Bible. He had prophets. He had 
uh, people doing things. And uh, there was a time, I forget what prophet he said it to or what leader. I don't know if it was Abraham, Moses, Isaac, or whoever. But he said, should I hide any of this from my servant? Mm. You got to be in the family in order to get this revelation. It's no different. It's no different in the physical. We do it all the time here on earth when we're clicked up and we're, we're in certain groups and stuff. You can't get the, the intel until you're in the family of certain things. And people aren't getting revelations because they're not a part of the family. And in order to get certain things, like in order to understand certain things, is you got to get in the family. You got to be a part of the family of God to uh, understand the heart of God in the way that other people describe the heart of God. Mm. And so like <laughs> what he's what he's explaining is something that came from when he came into the family of God, and he's trying to explain that to you, just like I try to explain it to others and stuff. Is that that uh, even if you don't understand now, um, you know, pray to God that you have understanding. Pray to God that you have wisdom. Because the Bible says in um, Ecclesiastics that eternity is in the heart of man. I want you to think about that. Your questions about God um, are specifically related to your uh, spiritual uh, wellness of God. Like you, we're not whole and that's why we search for God is because we're only made complete in God. So eternity is in the heart of man. We're longing to get the answers to life's difficult questions. We're longing to get the answers of this whole God thing because it says right there in Scripture, eternity is in the heart of man. And so that's why we're, we're God seekers and chasers, even when we're in our rebellion, is because we're just not complete without him. That's true. And, and I mean, you, you came to that and... Man, this is what it is. This is where you're at. Praise <laughs> God. Amen. Yeah, man. Amen. It's a, it's an amazing feeling. I can tell you that much right now. Yeah. And you can just be happy for no reason. Everything, I mean, I done had things, brother, like where everything's just going to crap, man. But I'm still there with the smile because that, that peace, man, is just, yeah, yeah. it's it's unbelievable, man. And it's a process, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, it's a process. Oh, it's most definitely, it's a process, man. Are you ready? Ready? Are you too busy for God? Are you prepared for the afterlife? Is God an afterthought or your daily bread of life? Do you have the time for God? Can you spread some time with God? This community network, men is with God. Don't get it twisted. Wrap yourself up in the law. Don't get it twisted. Wrap yourself up in the law. Don't get it twisted. Wrap yourself up in the law. This community network, do you have the time for God?